So anyway, you got a lot of these guys that are free agents and they're not signing. Everyone's wondering, well, why aren't these guys signing? Why aren't these guys signed yet? Well, obviously rosters are at 90. Teams drafted all their players. They acquired all their free agents and everything like that for minimum deals. Now, we're at the dawn of a, a thing that hasn't happened before where we're going directly from 90 to 53. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do you think that, obviously because this has never happened before, all these players are going to wait until that final cut day, and then they might sign. Where it's going to be like a the the tampering period, the two day free agent tampering period. Sometimes that's an interesting question. Right. We're entering a new world in the NFL, just as Paul is entering a new donut. Same donut. Don't let him lie. To you. <laughs> If you're an organization, I think nowadays you value league minimum more than you value league experience. So if I could pay a player, if I could if I could draft three players and pay them their league minimum as per draft, right? Mm-hmm. Or sign three, you know, undrafted free agents, I those are players that have to hit on my roster. Right? You gotta have a couple undrafted free agents on your fifty three man roster. When you get to paying quarterbacks, you know, a quarter to a half a billion dollars, <laughs> you got to be able to find guys from, to quote Mario, oh, got this guy from Directional University. You got to be able to find players who are from small colleges that went undrafted that are on league minimum deals. Buffalo has failed to do that mm. for the most part, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you look at their roster, Right now, they're top 53. Everybody's making a million dollars. You can't compete in the NFL when you've got everybody making over a million dollars. You, you can't. You don't have space. So when players become available, you don't ever have a chance at them. So if I'm an organization, I'm going to value multiple players at league minimum over one veteran. At the, at right now. Right? I think right now. Once they put pads on and you see them in a the game and you, you know, kind of see what you bought, I think that probably changes a bit. If you look at the top five teams that are able to manipulate the cap, you look at the top five teams that are in the playoffs every year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're able to do that. They're able to find these diamonds in a row. That conform to their system. That's the biggest thing that, you know, it doesn't matter. You give Isaiah Pacheco to any other team, he doesn't do what he does. I know we mentioned him in the previous episode. But you put him on any other team, he doesn't do what he does. You give him to Andy Reid. You know what I mean? You give Patrick Mahomes to Andy Reid. You can give Mahomes pretty much to anybody. But with Reid, he flourishes the most. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it just depends what system you put in. What is the Bills system? I mean, I think defensively it's been easier for them to put, bring in guys that that probably wouldn't be on any other roster. You know what I mean, Zimmer, <laughs> he, he, he made some noise for you. You know, mm-hmm. there's a couple other guys on the defensive side of the ball that, you know, you look at Levi Wallace ended up getting a – deal in Pittsburgh because of what he was doing. Yeah, but he had to go back to Buffalo a couple times. He did. He went back to that well a couple times on one-year deals because it was like, I know this system. I'm an undrafted free agent. I was brought in with Robert Foster mm-hmm. just because Dable was here. That's you right. You know what I mean? So it was like, yep. you know, he probably saw me in practice every day just beating up his receivers. <laughs> so Well, not literally beating him up. Levi Wallace was like 175 pounds. <laughs> right. Hey, but... Paul. I would take you in a fight against anybody. Oh, yeah, that's because I have nothing to lose. (laughs) (laughs) But we look at it now, it's like all these guys, this is like another negotiating period that they have Mm -hmm. for, I mean, what what day is the final cut down day? Do you know the specific date? Uh, I'll pull the calendar out. We should go over that. And now we cut to that. So important date. So roster cut date, uh, reduce rosters, August 29th. Okay, so got to go to fifty-three men, August twenty-nine. August twenty-nine. So it's pretty much it, it gives the uh, it gives the agents a lot of time to negotiate, mm-hmm. basically. Rather yep. than that, you know, the tamper the legal tampering period that they have in March, but versus what they have now, a lot of these teams are going to be, you know, as they get closer to it and they play all these preseason games, you're like, okay, we're going to be cutting this guy, we're going to be cutting this guy, we're going to move some room here. Right. You're, you're going to see so much speculation going on with so many different players. And on top of that, you don't have to wait till that date to cut multiple players, right? You could cut no. players and sign players. 
And don't forget, you go from 50, you go from 90 to 53, but a day and a half, two days later, you also have to have your practice squad done. That's yeah. another 16, yeah. you know? <laughs> so like, there's a lot that goes on with all those roster moves. And they're all on the cap now, right? Yep. Yep. They're the all figured squad against. Is now in the cap. Right. They're all figured against salary cap. So that, that makes a big difference going into the season financially. Now, it's, no, that stuff's not always interesting to everybody, but it does make no. a difference specifically in arguments like this. Like, do I think that had we gotten reports that Von Miller was going to be out till week eight, where, by the way, Von Miller looking intimidating on his Instagram. Have you seen these things? Yes. He's not human. I firmly believe that is not a human being. Good God. It was weird because I was looking at it, and it's like, I forgot how old he was for a second. Mm -hmm. And I was like, he's 34. I'm like, I'm trying to think of what I was doing at 34. This. You know. You know. <laughs> I, do. I was there. Witness. <laughs> Witness. I, was, I was a semi-pro defensive tackle at 34. Yeah. And I would wake up on days and be like, man. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> the, the freak athletes that these guys are. But oh, my God. It's, it's something that he's done before. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. I got speculation with, with Von Miller, but. The point is, the, that's not human. He's not human. No. No, he's not human. But your, your point was, if he was out for the first eight weeks, how you would have to play that yeah. roster tango with right. everybody. Because he's still going to make your roster. Yeah. Like, you still have to account for him. He has yeah. to make your 53-man roster before you can move him to physically unable to perform. So yeah. you can't go get a guy like Robert Quinn or, you mm -hmm. know, a player that... Well, they took care of that with uh, Floyd. I in think. this instance, yeah, they did. Instance. In this instance, they did. Yeah, and the thing that Paul's talking about where it's just not very interesting, you know, with the cap stuff, like let's say if Paul and I were both safeties and you're – like we're both on the bubble safeties where you're like making like $3.5 mm -hmm. but if you get cut, it's a, another – it's a $2 million dead cap where if I get cut, it's only like 500000 Right. And we're both like on that level. The way you play that game is that it, I would get cut and go to the practice squad because mm -hmm. the dead cap hit, and re-signing me would be cheaper than cutting him. It would be. Yeah. So that's the stuff that the math stuff is crazy. So, boy, we should use that as a segue for things. In any case, I don't think Buffalo is going to make any roster moves of any significance. I don't think most teams are going to make roster moves with any real significance for the most part because no. you have to be able to compete with league minimum deals for a lot of players. You have to be able to. And if you if you can't, you can't get those players, then your roster is going to just be middle of the road. Yeah. You, you know. Like but it, but it's, it's weird when you see a lot of those names that are on that list. They're yeah. guys that – what do they really have to prove? Does Ezekiel Elliott have to prove that he's the best third down blocking back in the NFL? Everyone pretty much knows that. Right. Robert Quinn, you know, you talk about some of these other guys. Delvin Cook, you have four years of tape to go on for Delvin Cook. We know what you're capable of. We can put you in this offense and you'll thrive. We don't need <laughs> you to be in camp to no. learn the offense. We, you no. already, we already know that you know what you're doing. Right. You DeAndre can, Hopkins, same thing. Exactly. You sign players like that. And they don't need a maturation process into the team. You can give them a role day one, and they'll be able to go out and execute that role yes. day one. And then at that maturation process occurs over the next few weeks. Yeah. You're telling me, oh, Robert Quinn. Yeah, no, we're going to teach you how to be a good defensive end. Yeah. Get out of here with that. Kill that guy. Rob. Yeah, that's right. Appreciate it. Yeah. I think it's a little different for defensive players than offensive players. Like skill position players, like running back, is probably simpler than wide receiver. But the call yeah. is ultimately, like, Ezekiel Elliott's a great example because he's an outstanding pass blocking back. Mm -hmm. he, Zeke could stay in the league for a real long time as a third down back. The question is, is he ready for that? No, I don't think he is. Right. And Probably why he's still a free agent, to be, yeah. to be honest. Uh, that and, the you know, the point that we're bringing up j just now is the fact that the rosters are at 90. They can't really afford it. There's no, there's no benefit to getting cutting a guy and, and signing one of these guys right now because right. you already know what they're capable of. Zeke is probably in that scenario where, um, you know, we talked about before. He's probably one of those guys where Andy Reid would just pick him up just because. Yeah. Just to have him. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But so, I mean, Kansas City has done that so much, and they've had to pay players so much. They don't have. No, the they space. don't. They yeah. they can't do stuff like no, that. But when it gets like week four, week five, different story. Some of these guys might hit the panic button. It's like those guys where they're, they're scalping tickets out in front of an event. And but when the national anthem is playing, they're trying to give them away. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'll take those. So to bring it back to Buffalo, I am really excited to see what happens at roster cutdown day because I think trades are going to be real prevalent in the oh, NFL this year. I can't wait to see that. Because you're going to be cutting guys. I think teams are going to value the relationships that they have with other GMs to move pieces around that are going to be cut. So I'm excited about that. I'm very curious what the practice squad's going to look like because that's another 16 that players. Is, yeah. Right. Um, and How you many know, can you protect? Four? Protection's done. Oh! Protection's gone. Can't protect any players on your practice oh. squad any longer. Yeah, that is, that, is a, that is no more. Oh. So I think, again, that changes the way that you build your practice squad because everybody's still available. You, you can't pick a player up off of waivers and put them on your practice squad. It's against the rules. Um, it's not how that works. <laughs> That's not how any of this works. <laughs> We're in now now. <laughs> <laughs> so, interesting uh, fact about Spaceballs. A few moments later. One of my favorite movies of all time. I know, you love Corey. I love I love the movie Spaceballs. Did you know that in order to make the movie Spaceballs, since it was a parody on Star Wars, yes. there was an agreement between uh, George Lucas, George Lucas did Star Wars. Uh, it's not my thing, right? Yes, yeah, he did. He did yeah. There's an agreement between Lucas. I'm trying to think he did Indiana and, Jones too. So. Yeah, I can see how you get the two of them mixed up. <laughs> Mel Brooks and George Lucas came to an agreement that Mel Brooks was allowed to make the movie just as long as there wasn't any merchandise. That's why oh. that's why yogurt opens up the garage door and there's all the space balls merchandise. What that was a joke for George Lucas because <laughs> they weren't allowed to make any merchandise. So if you ever see a t shirt that says space balls the t shirt, which is a great it's a great buy. That's a great buy, space balls the t shirt. Uh one hundred percent not real. Not a legit thing. Spaceballs the t shirt. Yeah, space balls the t shirt, space balls the flamethrower, you know, like Spaceballs, the toilet paper, none of that stuff ever existed. So, oh man, can you imagine what the movie props for that would be worth? Oh God. Since they never, they weren't allowed to do any merchandising for that movie. That seems weird that he would do that though. Like, that was at Lucas. It was a control thing. It was the 90s. Yeah. You know, like I, I get it. The whole movie was a parody of his. When was it released? Oh, Spaceballs had to be. If it wasn't 89, it had to be before 92. All right, irrelevant. Okay. What? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sport, sports and movies, different thing. Sports and movies, different thing. Yeah, he got shot about, with his own gun. We, we talk about wrestling stuff from 85. What are you talking about? Is this really what the bandana is all about? Was this all a Randy Savage? Oh, my God. Look at those glasses. Oh my god, the cream of the crop! <laughs> I stared at a candle for about two hours. <laughs> you know, Randy Savage was a professional baseball player? He was. Yeah. Randall Poffo. That was his name. Yeah, and imagine him. Imagine him on the mound, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You like the Savannah Bananas. <laughs> Can't wait to go. I cannot wait to see that in person. They are amazing. I cannot wait to see it in person. Uh, do we have a point to end this? Or? I think I think we left that a while ago. All right. We'll try to return to the island of relevancy, Mr. Reigns. <laughs> <laughs>